with the product. They make it look good. This is branding. Name brand cars, Mercedes, Cadillacs, Range Rovers, uh, uh, Lexus. You know, you have that. You feel like you somebody. Am I right, somebody? You feel like you somebody when you driving the Benz. Oh, y'all not talking to me. Because y'all know I'm telling the truth. You, as a, as a man, you, it's, it, it, you be, I mean, like, I got a, I got a Kia. And I'm kind of like, I don't know if I want to approach that young lady in a Kia. <laughs> she, she might look at me and go, oh, Lord, he coming to pick me up in a Kia? I know. That's, <laughs> so it puts you in a position where you got to find something that you can say, now I'm somebody. That's what advertisement does. That's what branding does. Branding's, branding causes people to look at you in a way that says you're somebody. All right? I'm going somewhere. The point here is that advertising agencies have created a brand or a created product by making it look good, sound good, feel good, and so on and so on. Because advertisers understand that through proper presentation, people will acquire a taste and a longing for what has been placed as name brand or high quality because they kept that product in our faces and on our minds. Hmm. You ever heard a song on the radio and you might not have liked that song, but you find yourself singing that song because they played it so much? I can't stand that song. But then because they played it so much, you find yourself singing it and you be like, now why am I singing that song? Because marketers and people in that type of business understand, I need to keep this on your mind. I need to keep it in your eyes. I need for you to see it 24-7. I need for you to hear it 24-7 because it's going to resonate in where? In your spirit. All right. So the key and important thing to note here is that, first of all, the product needs to work. It needs to do what it say. It needs to be able, if you're getting tired, you you like, I know Tide going to clean this stuff. Tide's been proven. <laughs> I know I know this kind of bleach, y'all know all kind of all bleaches don't really do what bleach supposed to do. Then you got some good bleach like Clorox. You get that stuff that just say bleach on it, and you'd be like, okay, that might you might save a few dollars, but <laughs> you, you may not get the clean that Clorox will do. Y'all know I'm telling the truth for y'all who who clean your houses and do all that. They, it, certain the certain types of bleaches will give a strong scent and will freshen up your house. Then those other bleaches, it'll be okay for about two hours. After two hours, <laughs> okay, let me move. So it needs to work. And so they need to package it also to catch your eye. Need to package it. Now I'm going, so I'm still going somewhere. Watch this. Restaurants have commercials that display food that looks tasty in order to appeal to what? Our hunger. Because one thing about people is we get hungry. And one thing about that business is if they make it, you ever go to a restaurant or you see the commercial and the ribs look like they just perfect. I'm, I'm a big man, so you know, I know about this stuff. <laughs> the ribs look perfect on the picture. The commercial have them looking good on the platter, and they're smoking, and you know, the, the, the juice is coming off of it. It makes you hungry just thinking about it, don't it? But then when you get to the restaurant, you see your plate. This don't look nothing like the commercial. <laughs> Am I right, somebody? This don't look like the commercial. They put their best foot forward to get you there. But then after you taste it, it's not too bad. You go ahead and eat it. And then you may even go back some more. But the but the commercial display of it, nothing like what you see when you get it before you. So it's important. So now I ask this question. Let me bring this on. How does the church present God to a world that is so visual and is more led by things that are tangible? How does the church present God? Hmm, good question. How do we market God and the things of God that makes him as beautiful as he is? Because y'all know God is beautiful. Hmm. 
Bible says that creation declares his glory. When we look at creation, it shows everything that, that, that concerns God, God's mindset, God's everything, the, the trees, the leaves, the birds. Now, the only thing I would ask God about, I wouldn't question him, but I asked him, why did he make flies? And them some pesky things. <laughs> and then, but everything has a defense mechanism. God is so awesome. He's so wise. Everything, everything that God has created has a defense mechanism. Why? Because how the, how the earth has turned out as a result of the fall. So that's, it's, it's important for us to really dig into scripture and then really hear God because you will understand the mind of God more when you spend a little time with him. Everything has a defense mechanism involved in it. Now, I believe that when we get on the other side and we come to the new earth, I believe that if there's insects flowing around and bugs and bees and all that, they won't bother us as much. They probably won't bother. They'll be beautiful. We'll probably be able to put them in our hands. Come on, somebody. But right now, in this present world, a bee say, I got to protect myself, so I'm going to sting you. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, let me move. So is it possible that we have promoted ourselves over God? Using God to accomplish self-worth in our Sales and in the eyes of other people, are we trying to look good? You know, say I go to church, and so when we say we go to church, what does what do people supposed to think? Lord have mercy. So that's, that's what I'm talking about. The mentality. Okay, so let's go here. When you hear of these uh, uh, priests and others who have committed uh, uh, um, acts of just weren't godly. And you see it on TV. This man was a preacher. How do you look at the church now? How does the world see the church? Because, because we, we, you know, we present ourselves as holy people. But how do we present, how does that look to other people who really need to understand God? Okay. So, I, I come back to that. Do we attract people to ourselves in order to gain notoriety, prestige, honor, glory? Are we presenting God in a way that we want people to look at us and not understand that God is understood by faith, which is unseen, but again, understood? By faith, we know that the worlds were framed by God. By the word of God, God spoke in the in world, and, and, and the world was framed. And everything that God said came to be. So now it's a faith walk. It's a faith thing because, because you can't see God. But then on the other hand, you can see God when you look at his creation. All right. I mean, I, I'm going to keep going because I'm going to deal with that anyway. Creation reflects the glory of God, meaning that God is understood by his creation. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So whenever you look around and look around at people, you see God because God created them. He formed them. That's the work of God. Nothing belongs to the devil. Come on, somebody. Nothing belongs to the enemy. The enemy didn't make nothing, but the enemy is a thief. And all he did was steal the glory from God. Oh, y'all not hearing me. Everything that God does, the enemy imitates it to make himself look like a God because that's what God said. See, he thought in his heart that I will be like the most high. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. I know y'all read your Bible. Yeah. I will be like the most high. I will exalt myself above the congregation. That a devil, that, man, that mindset it has entered into the minds of man everywhere. <sighs> okay. <laughs> So, so, so God is understood by faith and, and creation reflects him. We are created to give credit to God for creating us. We are his image in, the, in, in every part of us. And, 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 and who are we? Uh, uh, all of our attributes, I'm sorry, all of the attributes that we have are attributed to the creative power of God. <laughs> It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of his pasture. 
God knew that mankind would lose focus and would attempt to operate apart from him, so he set boundaries in place. The day that you eat of this fruit or this tree, thou shalt surely die. God set boundaries in place because y'all got to understand something. God made man eternal. These bodies will die, but your soul will never die. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. That means that the soul that sinneth will die, meaning it will be separated from God. It will be disfellowshipped from God. It will have no more connection with God, but God still created man eternal because God is eternal. That's why they said, he that believeth should not perish, but what? To have everlasting life. How do you think you're going to have everlasting life? The Bible gives us to know that we're going to have new bodies. We're going to have new glorified bodies. That means that that man in you, that spirit, that soul in you, that did not sin no more, not because you didn't commit sinfulness, but because Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin and you accepted the gift of God, the gift of God. Let me say it again. You accepted the gift of God. You will have a new body. And this is what I'm talking about, the proper presentation, because... We send people to hell for every little sin that they do. Well, guess what I say? Scoot over. <laughs> Scoot over. Because the Bible says if a man if a man says he, he God's faith, if a man confesses sins, he is what? Faithful and just to forgive him of his sins and to what? Cleanse him from all unrighteousness. So God never said that you would never sin again. He just says you just have to open your mouth and confess it and repent of it. Oh, y'all don't like me. It's okay. Because, because you'll beat yourself up more and more. And every time that you mess up, you'll end up beating yourself up. You'll beat yourself into a miserable place. And that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to think that you have not made any ground with God. But the bottom line is you did make ground with God. You have made some uh, a place, some progress with God. And sometimes God allows us to see ourselves to see that we still ain't all that. Oh, no. right. Y'all ain't gonna like me after this. Y'all ain't gonna give me no offering or nothing, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say this. So God knew that mankind would lose focus and, and, and would attempt to operate apart from him. So he set boundaries. He put the tree and he and, and, and now uh, uh, um, he, he says this. He says, he says, now that I sent my son, I sent a son, I sent, I sent a provision. I sent, I sent a, 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 not just a substitute, but I sent my son to take your place in the penalty that you would have suffered. All right. God knew that because of the frailty and limited ability of man, man would destroy himself and everything that God created. Man would destroy. So God put things in place that would serve its purpose at appropriate times. In other words, God had everything under control before. Let me say this again. Before the foundation of the world. Worthy is the lamb who was slain before what? The foundation of the world. Worthy is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Jesus Christ had died before we were even born. Y'all better say something to me. In the mind of God, it's called the logos or the, the expression of thought, the, the thought expression of God. Jesus had already died for our sins. God, because God knew what man was going to do. He knew what man was going to do. What I'm trying to get us to see is, is that we have to give people the hope. We can, we, the, church, the church will get filled up, not because we need to look good as men sitting up here with suits, as ladies sitting up there looking pretty with nice hats on and beautiful shoes, not because of that, but because people feel the spirit of love. When people feel the spirit of love, then people are attracted to us no matter how you look. Amen. You can look like a hillbilly with overalls on, but people will be attracted to the spirit of love that will give them to know <laughs> that I can make it in this too. A proper presentation of the gospel of love. Okay, let me get on. Let me get on. I humble myself because through my evaluation of myself, I find too many errors. First thing we got to do is 
evaluate ourselves. Don't look at nobody else. Go home and look at yourself. Look in the mirror. Talk to yourself. They ain't gonna think you're crazy. Look at yourself and, and say, what is it that I could do better? What is it that I'm doing that's not good? <laughs> How do I really feel about people? How do I treat people? Because I heard Christians get up and say, I don't like people. How can you be a Christian and don't like people? How can a man say that he loves God who he has not seen and hate his neighbor or despise his neighbor who he see every day? How dwelleth the love of God in you? When you despise people. In other words, sometimes you just got to be patient with people because, you know, whatever we think and however we think things should be, you still got to be patient with folks. I, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, there's a different spirit out in this world right now that was happening way back in the days of uh, Noah. Way back then. There was, there, there was, there was, there was, there was a spirit. Y'all know what I'm talking about. There was, a, there was a homosexual presence. Yeah. Now, let me submit this to you. How will a homosexual be changed from his ways? How will a whoremonger be changed from their ways? They're going to be changed by the Spirit of God. They're going to be changed by the, by the, by the, they're going to be changed by the patience of the people who represent God. I'm not going to go into any all the particulars and the logistics of uh, how they should be in the church. I'm not getting into that. That's not my. That's not what this is about. What it's about is presenting the gospel of love to a world that's full of sin. You can't. You, you people can't get converted and be perfect the next day. Hello, somebody. All right, let me move on. Y'all got quiet on me. Let me hurry up, brother. It's almost two. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I found many years. So, so then, what do I do? I, I allow me. I allow me to present God to you from Scripture. Let me. Let me just do that. Let me do this. First of all, God is love. I just said that. God is love. God did insert a death penalty into place for people who sin. But then He turned around and allowed a, and put in a provision for us to escape that. Through his son, Jesus Christ. And so in other words, it's, it's important to come to know God in a personal way, in a real way, in a, in, in a relationship. It's, it's, it's important to come to know God so that you can understand the love of God and you can understand that God is not, God is not necessarily about religion, but he's about relationship. Okay, y'all got quiet again. All right. My relationship with God is not based upon merit. It's not based upon how good I am. It's not based upon how much good I do. But it's based upon the fact that he loved me first. Come on, somebody. He loved me first and he gave his son as a, as a propitiation for my sin in place of me. So he loved me that much. And all he wants us to do is accept the gift. Except what he did. He said, stop trying to intellectually figure God out. Stop trying to use your intellect to go about this thing. But by faith, accept that Jesus did die on that cross. And his blood paid the sin, of, uh, the sin penalty. Hmm. So from scripture, God is love. From scripture, God paid the price for us already. After he did, after he pronounced the penalty, the judgment. So now I don't have to suffer the consequences no more, Brother Brown. So I'm not, I'm not coming to church and I'm not in God because I'm trying to escape hell. I'm in church and I'm in God because I love him now. All right. I want to be here. I want to be with the saints. I want to feel the fellowship and the love of the saints because I love God. It ain't about hell with me no more. All right. And it's not about hell with you. Because the Bible said we have been passed from death to life. We're no longer bound to hell. We're no longer bound to a, a burning, destructive hell. We are now in, seated in heavenly places. This is what my Bible tells me. And I said, well, how can that be when I still mess up? 
He said, see, what you're doing now is you are worrying too much about stuff that you can't handle, that you can't control. He says, but you give it to me. Come on, somebody. We sing the song. Give it to me. I'll bear it. If there's a need in your life, I will take it if you want to leave. We give it to him and then take it back. We give it to him and start bearing the burden of the things that we're dealing with. I'm not saying that there should not be any consciousness because there is a consciousness. There is a conviction that we as saints, we, we, we suffer a conviction when we do wrong. We do suffer a conviction. But it's good to have that conviction because you know that God is still there. The world does not have a conviction because they don't have the righteous Holy Spirit of God. So there's no conviction. But when you're convicted, you need to rejoice because God is still there. Oh, y'all don't like this kind of preaching, but it's some good stuff, I'm telling you. There's some good stuff. Now, watch this. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to get done. I'm going to get done. Because I know y'all thinking about the chicken in the crock pot and all that. <laughs> God told us clearly in the writings of Paul that the law was perfect and the law is perfect but we are sold under sin as a result of the law that showed us how sinful we are. Am I in the Bible or not? You can go find it in there because it's in there. The law showed us how sinful we are. It was never meant to save us. Read the Bible. The law was never meant to save us, but it was to show us through our arrogance and our pride and our self-exalted ways that you ain't nothing apart from God. Because the law is the perfection of God. The law tells us how perfect God is. And if you had to line up with every bit of that law, the Bible says if you break one of them, you're guilty of the whole law. Brother Brown, we ain't got a chance. <laughs> we don't have a chance because every day somebody breaks one of God's law. But then the Bible turns around and says this, if a man sins against you seven times, do not forgive, if, he, if he sins, forgive him seven times, 70. How many times could you really see it in one day? That's what it, what it displays is the mercy of God. It displays the grace of God towards us. God says, you, you, you're too bound by your, your ability to live perfect. He says, no, I don't want you to be so focused on your ability to live perfect. perfect. I want you to keep your mind stayed on me. He said, and I will keep you in perfect peace. Then every time you mess up, you just say, Lord, forgive me. I did, I, whether you meant to do it or not, just, Lord, forgive me. I repent of that thing. And what happens with a lot of people, the reason why a lot of people won't come back to church is because they feel like they are damned right. after one mistake. Right. And we got to be careful that we're not like the Pharisees who were sitting up there putting all those laws on people, making people feel like that they weren't good enough, and to find out that the Pharisees themselves wasn't good enough. And Jesus called them a generation of snakes and vipers. I know I'm in the Word. When these folks was, was, was practicing the law, they studied the law, Paul was one of the main ones. He was a Sanhedrin and Paul was killing Christians because they was naming the name of Jesus Christ. And he was killing them. And God and Jesus had a meeting with Paul on the road to Damascus. He said, why are you kicking against the pricks? Right. He said, who, are, who is this, Lord? Is this you? Yes, yeah, me. <laughs> and Paul was converted. And then Paul turned around and became a sought-out man by the same people that he was working for. Right. Now they're ready to kill him. Right. Why? Because he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. His life was changed. His life was turned around. He understood love, mercy, and grace from the perspective of God. 
God is trying to bring us to a place in this day and time, in this generation, when all this stuff is out here trying to kill us, when all this stuff is going on in this world, and where it's leading up to, and whether y'all want to understand it or not, the mark of the beast is coming. And the bottom line is, <laughs> you know, if you found out you was going to die in six months, how much perfect could you be? You start trying to do stuff right. You try to you try to walk uh, little ladies across the street. You try to go out and carry folks groceries. That ain't not. That's not what makes you perfect. Amen. But it's the Holy Ghost that makes. 